How did the articles in the holy place of the temple differ from that of the tabernacle? This is the question that we seek to answer today as we continue our verse-by-verse -verse study of the book of First Kings on walking through the Bible. Today we're going to be discussing 1 Kings chapter 7, verses 40 to 51, but before we do that, let's read the passage. If you have a Bible with you, you can turn to 1 Kings chapter 7, verse 40, but if you don't have a Bible, don't worry, just follow along with us on the screen. The version that we'll be reading from is the New King James Version. So 1 Kings chapter 7, beginning at verse 40. Hiram made the lavers and the shovels and the bowls. So Hiram finished doing all the work that he was to do for King Solomon for the house of the Lord. The two pillars, the two bowl-shaped capitals that were on top of the two pillars, the two networks covering the two bowl-shaped capitals which were on top of the pillars, 400 pomegranates for the two networks, two rows of pomegranates for each network to cover the two bowl-shaped capitals that were on top of the, uh, of the pillars. The ten carts and the ten lavers on the carts, one sea and one and twelve oxen under the sea, the pots, the shovels, and the bulls. All these articles which Hiram made for King Solomon for the house of the Lord were of burnished bronze. In the plain of the Jordan the king had cast them in clay molds between Succoth and Zeratan. And Solomon did not weigh all the articles because they were so many. The weight of the bronze was not determined. Thus Solomon had all the furnishings made for the house of the Lord, the altar of gold, and the table of gold on which was the showbread, the lampstands of pure gold, five on the right side and five on the left in front of the inner sanctuary, with flowers and the lamps and the wick trimmers of gold, the basins, the trimmers, the bowls, the ladles, and the censers of pure gold, and the hinges of gold, both for the doors of the inner room, the most holy place, and for the doors of the main hall of the temple. So all the work that King Solomon had done for the house of the Lord was finished. And Solomon brought in the things which his father David had dedicated, the silver and the gold and the furnishings. He put them in the treasuries of the house of the Lord. For the past two chapters, we've been largely looking at the construction of the temple of Solomon. We have seen that the temple is double the size of the tabernacle and much more ornate. The tabernacle had articles made of gold and bronze, but the, temp the tabernacle itself was largely made of tapestry supported by acacia wood. The temple would not only have articles made of gold and bronze, but the structure itself would be overlaid with gold. The temple was made of stone, making it a permanent structure, whereas the tabernacle could be transported. The laver of the tabernacle was replaced with a large sea or a large basin of water, able to hold much more water due to the number of priests now working in the temple. In the last lesson, we also saw that ten lavers were made in order to cleanse the sacrificial animal's flesh and fat before it was offered, something that the tabernacle didn't have, likely due to the fact that the number of animals prepared simultaneously had increased by the time of the temple construction. We now see in verse 40 that the work of Hiram, the bronze craftsman, was now finished. He had created all the lavers, shovels, and bowls of bronze, along with the pillars for the temple, the sea, and the oxen to support the sea. It is not recorded for us the construction of the bronze altar of sacrifice being built, but since Second Chronicles does give us this construction, and First Kings 8 will refer to it, we can simply conclude that its construction was omitted by the author of First Kings, for what reason we do not know. All of these articles were cast in Succoth and Zeratan near the plain of the Jordan River. From Joshua 3.16, we learn that Zeratan is near the city of Adam at the Jordan River, and Succoth is located not far away from that either, so the map on the screen now gives the approximate location under consideration. So much bronze was used in the construction of the temple that Solomon didn't even bother weighing it. After all, the bronze articles of the temple were made, the author... Uh, after all the bronze articles of the temple were made, the author of 1 Kings relays to us that all the other furnishings of the temple were completed too. First, we have the altar of gold, which is the altar of incense that stood before the most holy place in the temple. We also have the table of showbread, which was made of gold as well. Sun Chronicles will tell us that there were actually ten tables made for the showbread. However, it is likely that only one table was used at a time. 
Why there were multiple tables made for the showbread, we do not know, but perhaps it was because the temple was bigger than the tabernacle, so more tables were made. The final article for inside the inside of the temple was the golden lampstand, which, like the table of showbread, was also made in a multiple of ten. The golden candlestick would have looked similar to the golden candlestick of the, temp of the tabernacle, and the reason for ten of them is likely due to the size of the room needing more light. Why ten? Well, ten represented completeness, and so it is likely that is why this number was chosen. So as it concerns the articles in the holy place of the temple, there were not any additional articles like we saw with the ten lavers outside the temple. However, the number of articles changed as it concerns the table of showbread and the lampstand. But with that, the temple of God is now finished, and what a grand structure it was. Once it was done, Solomon took the unused portion of silver and gold and furnishings that David, his father, had dedicated for the construction of the temple in 1 Chronicles 22 and 29 and placed it in the treasuries of the house of the Lord so that it was able to be used by the priests in service to God. Now Solomon would have most certainly contributed some of his immense wealth for the construction of the temple as well. So if there was such a large, ex a large excess over in, uh, le left over in spite of the amount of gold, silver, and bronze used is a testament to how much was given for the construction of the temple. But with the temple now complete, it is time for its dedication, something that we'll begin to cover, the Lord willing, in the next lesson. With that, our time is up for today. The Lord willing, we hope you'll join us for tomorrow's discussion of 1 Kings chapter 8, verses 1 to 13, as we continue our walk through the Bible. One verse at a time. I'm not a Thank you for watching today's episode. We hope that you found it edifying and ask that you not only subscribe to our channel and podcast, but that you like and share this episode among your friends so that the saving gospel of Jesus Christ can go out to the whole world.